Hello Explorers and welcome to another Explorers video. It's a Wednesday so we like to put a video up for you to enjoy at home during this time when we can't meet together at church. Hope you're all doing well and we hope you enjoy this video. We're going to start with a game and if you listen to our or watch our Sunday services on our YouTube channel you will have played this game last Sunday. It's called Spot the dot dot dot. And what you have to do is look at the stuff in the office behind me and see if you can spot some of these things that I'm going to say. The way you can tell me is by shouting at the screen and maybe pointing where you think it is and see if you can be the first person, if you're watching with other people, see if you can be the first person to spot those things. Okay, the first thing I want you to spot is something red. Have a look. See if you can spot something in this room that's red. There's a few different books that side you might be able to spot. There's some that side as well. I wonder if you spotted them. I also kind of have red hair. I definitely have red cheeks, so you could have spotted those. Now, there are some things in this game that are surprising that you wouldn't normally expect to be in an office. I wonder if you can spot the penguin. Can you spot the penguin that isn't normally here? If you look near my head, above my head, you should be able to spot him. There he is up there. Did you spot him? Can you spot, this is another surprising thing, can you spot some bananas? Have a look round, look out for some yellow things. They definitely should be in the kitchen, not in here. I wonder if you've spotted them. They are up there hanging on those books. Here's another surprising one. This one's very surprising. Can you spot a loo roll? That definitely doesn't normally live in this room. Have a look carefully because it's white and the wall is also white. So have a look at all the different bits of this room and see if you can spot a loo roll. I'll give you a clue. It's near a musical instrument. Have a look, have a look. If you've spotted the guitar over there, the loo roll is balanced on top and I'll have to remember to put that back later. Now, the last thing in our game of spot the dot 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 is our friend, Patrick. And if you come to Explorers on a Wednesday, you will know that Patrick is a giraffe and he likes to play hide and seek. And he comes every week to Explorers on a Wednesday. At the moment, he is playing hide and seek in this room behind me. So I wonder if you can spot Patrick. He's quite far away from the camera. He wanted to make it difficult for you guys today. So have a look, use your eyes, look round, wonder whether you can see him. Look right round the edges of the, of the video, see if you can spot him. If you've spotted him, well done. If not, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna go over to where he is and show you. He's up here. There he is. He was hiding on the top of a painting on the wall, right in the distance, Patrick. You wanted to make it tricky for the explorers. Now, Patrick has a question that he would like to ask us. He has a question for us each week. This question has two parts. He says, this, over the last few weeks, have you helped someone or has someone helped you? I wonder if you could think about that. Have you helped someone, maybe your mum, or maybe someone you know, maybe your neighbour, or has someone helped you? I was thinking about this question and I remembered two of my neighbours helping me by sending me some delicious food that they'd cooked, some cookies, and then another neighbour sent me some hot cross buns that he'd made, and they helped me. I think that was a week or, so, week or two ago. We have a surprise now at uh, Explorers because Marion and Alan, who you will recognise, are also joining us for this video. And so they can answer Patrick's question. Alan and Marion, have you helped anyone over the last few weeks or has anyone helped you? Well, I have helped Alan because he can't go to the barbers and have his hair cut. And his hair was getting rather long, so I took the scissors and I cut it. And if it's wrong, too bad, it will grow, but it does look a bit better than it did. I think it looks great, Alan. Thank you. And several people have tried to help us by offering to do our shopping. They've been very kind. 
and I've tried to help Marion by doing some of the cooking. That's why I'm wearing an apron right now, because today I'm making a sausage risotto. Carrots, onions, peas, sweet corn, and mushrooms, and sausages and rice. And two secret mystery ingredients, and I can't tell you about those, of course. Well, I hope that, Marion, that's a delicious dinner for you to enjoy. Well done, Alan. Well, Marion is going to read us our story now, which she has with her at her house. And I'm going to share with you the pictures. But Marion, would you like to tell us, first of all, what book it is? The book is here, you can see it. It's called Jesus and the Very Big Surprise. It's by Randall Goodgame and Catalina Echeverry and published by the Good Book Company. Jesus and the Very Big Surprise. Jesus always surprises everybody. Even though he is the maker of all the planets and galaxies in the universe, surprise, he came to earth as a little baby. And even though he is the king of kings, he wasn't born in a big, beautiful palace. Instead, surprise, he was born in a little stable where the smelly animals lived. When Jesus grew up and started preaching and teaching, he surprised people all the time. One of his very favourite ways to surprise people was by telling them stories about what God is really like. Some people thought God was always angry. Some people thought God was a trickster who liked to make bad things happen. And some people thought God didn't care about them at all. Of course, Jesus knew exactly what God was like. So he told a story about God's love in a way that would surprise everybody, even you. The Servants Who Waited by Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus told a story about servants waiting for their big fancy master to come home from a great big wedding. It was their job to watch and wait, with candles burning bright. The servants had to be ready for the moment the master would return. But that isn't easy. When the master is away, the servants keep very busy. There are dishes to wash and animals to feed and clothes to clean. And then when all that work is done, the servants still need to be ready. When the master comes home, they will serve him a midnight snack, fluff his pillow, bring him his best robe, and read him a bedtime story. But until then, they wait. They wait. And they wait. Until... Finally, the master returns, but the servants are in for a big surprise. Come and rest, says the master. You must be tired from waiting up for me. Come and sit down at my table and I will serve you. I know just what you need. The end. In Jesus' story, the master loves his servants so much that he puts on servants' clothes and he serves them instead. What kind of master would love like that? What kind of God would choose to be a servant? Surprise! Jesus would. He is the great master who serves. Like the master in the story, Jesus surprised everyone by using his power to serve. He suffered and died on the cross so we could live with him forever. But Jesus still had one more very big surprise. He came alive again. Then he went back to his Father in heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to stay with us till he returns. No one knows the day or hour when Jesus will return. It could be any minute. And just like the servants in his story, we have plenty to do while we wait. 
there are hungry people to serve, lonely people to care for, friends to share with, and enemies to forgive. And it all begins with loving Jesus, the great master who serves. He knows what we need because he is what we need. So get ready, the master is coming. And that is the end of the story. Thank you, Marion. Well, explorers, I'm going to say a prayer. And if you'd like to join me at the end, you can sing with me the Amen song. So shall we shut our eyes and talk to God? Father God, thank you so much that when Jesus came to earth, he used his power to serve us. Thank you that he died on the cross and rose again so that we can be friends with you. Please help us, Lord, to serve and love other people like Jesus loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Brilliant. I hope you were singing along at home. Marion was singing along at her house too. Well, at the end of that story, there was a, some lots of ideas of how we can serve other people just like Jesus, or not just like, but a bit like how Jesus has served us. One of those ideas was to care for lonely people. And this week, instead of a craft, I'm setting you a craft challenge. I wonder if you could draw a picture or write a letter or maybe make something that you could send to someone who might be feeling lonely. Because at the moment we can't go out and see our normal friends or family, we all have to stay at our own homes. There are lots of people who might be feeling lonely and I'm sure they would love to get some post from one of you our explorers. So your craft challenge this week, can you write or make or draw something that you could send to help care for a lonely person? I've also sent your mums and dads a song that they can show you if you would like to sing one of the songs we normally do on a Wednesday. For now though, this is at the end of this video. Hopefully we will see you again soon. And if not, there will be another video for Explorers next week. See you soon. Bye bye.